Getty in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCS AM 1160 and FM 101.1. It's always good to get Jack Hanna in here because Jack always brings us interesting interesting conversation topics, and he has another one. The Refugee Working Group of Indiana County is pleased to host a panel discussion coming up next Wednesday, and this will be at the uh, Indiana Fire Station West at Indian Springs Road and Warren Road. Migrant Workers, Indiana County and Beyond is its title, and Jack Hanna is in the studio with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. A pleasure to be here as always. It's good to have you with us here this morning. So, Migrant Workers, Indiana County and Beyond, first of all, Let's explain what a migrant worker is. People might not know. Um, Very good uh, point and question. Yes, um, that is a a characterization of a person that uh, is not a resident uh, of the United States and um, may be uh, documented or undocumented as far as their work capacity Mm -hmm. is concerned. So someone that is not a U.S. citizen, Mm -hmm. um, that is is, um, a migrant and working as a migrant uh, 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 documented or undocumented person. And in a lot of cases, you're talking about a seasonal employee who might come in and work on one of the commercial farms or in in that sort of a capacity. That is exactly it. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, our group, which was founded a little over two years ago, started talking about international migration uh, when the... uh, especially when the uh, the Syrian civil war was resulting in many people immigrating over the Mediterranean Sea and, and throughout other countries. And uh, after focusing on that particular topic with a presentation, we then focused on Pennsylvania and migrant issues that occurred here mm-hmm. last year. And then uh, this year we decided to focus on Indiana County itself. And we were, some of us were somewhat surprised at uh, after inquiring that there's a number of migrant workers here in Indiana County that works in the agricultural community, mm-hmm. um, uh, such as planting and harvesting, um, uh, the um, milk and cow industry, and also uh, restaurants and food services. And uh, we thought this is not an issue and a topic that we think many people in Indiana County are cognizant of, and we wanted to focus some attention on it to educate uh, the community and also um, provide resources as to uh, information about what its in- impact is with our economy uh, generally. In many cases, those folks are going to encounter natural challenges, um, language being one of them, um, coming to an area where the predominant language is, is English. And, and for, I would guess, 90 percent of Indiana County, it's the only language is English. Uh, And uh, here they have to integrate themselves into a society uh, where if they don't have good English skills, they're automatically working from behind, if you will. Uh, uh, That is correct. And uh, that is a real challenge and and, uh, one of the greatest challenges for migrant workers uh, 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 as they uh, participate in the workforce. Um, So... uh, uh, there are people that uh, speak both languages here that uh, assist uh, uh, people that don't that are migrant workers. But um, for the most part, uh, they're able to survive and to um, uh, participate in the workforce and provide very important necessary jobs, uh, filling uh, uh, jobs that if they aren't filled, uh, will evaporate and leave the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, farmers particularly are having real challenges finding employees to assist them in their farms. And uh, 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 native residents of Indiana County and Pennsylvania aren't signing up and uh, yeah. asking for those kinds of jobs, and the work needs to be done. So the event is next Wednesday, and it's happening at Indiana Fire Station West at Indian Springs Road and Warren Roads. And it's from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. It is free, and anybody can come. It's open to the general public. Uh, tell me about the panel members and uh, what some of the discussion topics will be. Thank you very much. Uh, pleased to do so. Uh, we have uh, a Professor Hilario Molina from IUP, uh, uh, who... Uh, uh, whose research and focus of attention is uh, demographics and uh, and how um, migrants uh, have transformed American society and has and has published many uh, 
uh, uh, uh, papers on that particular topic. Uh, Tom Berezniak, uh, a clinic relationship manager for Penn State Extension, uh, delivering information to people and communities uh, uh, of our workforce in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, Dr. Brandon Vick, a former Peace Corps volunteer and assistant professor of economics at IUP uh, for five years, focusing on uh, issues such as labor and health economics and poverty. And finally, uh, a woman attorney, Vanessa Griffith, uh, uh, who works at the Friends of Farm Workers uh, organization handling immigration cases, focusing um, on visas uh, uh, and other matters. So yeah. a, a very strong uh, uh, academic panel that I think will uh, have a, a great presentation and an educational one for all. And topically, we're talking about issues of, of what? Work requirements? Oh, um, uh, housing? What? Uh, uh, um, that's part of it. But, um, what kind of economic benefits and challenges uh, migrant workers bring to a community? Mm-hmm. Uh, w- what's the net advantage or, and disadvantages of, of having them participate? Uh, we think that, that it's a net plus and that it it's helps sustain it's the local community, and one w- worker uh, uh, can uh, spin off uh, additional jobs within the community of two or three. So th- there's a positive impact by having employees mm-hmm. uh, work in in uh, the farming community and uh, food services community that assists the rest of the uh, economy, uh, regardless of uh, by payment of taxes, et cetera. So uh, we, we think it focuses on providing what the benefits are and the challenges also. Yeah, I would guess that a migrant worker um, would come into this particular area and really whatever area it is in which they settle – uh, for however long that they would have uh, some legal challenges uh, that they would have to handle and issues of social um, social implications that would come up in their lives as well. While they are here, they may do things differently in their culture, and uh, trying to assimilate that into our culture uh, might present some sort. They might run up against uh, some resistance, and uh, and so they would need to know about, you know, what are my rights here? Um, you know, what are the social justice um, Issues. Implications and issues. Uh, you're absolutely right, and and that's one of the biggest challenges uh, with regard uh, to immigrants are concerned. Uh, they do face those kinds of problems, and uh, yet they are uh, very fearful of coming out uh, and uh, uh, asking for assistance and support and help with regard to those challenges because they're fearful of the, uh, uh, potential legal consequences regarding their immigration status or their language uh, challenges or just their uh, the their cultural um uh, um unfamiliarity with how american mm-hmm. society works so uh you're absolutely right those are uh, issues that are important that the panel will be intending to address um uh, as, uh, as far as social problems or uh, exist that exist or arise because of uh, migrants uh I've seen numerous studies that state uh, that as far as uh, crime and uh, social problems are concerned, uh, they're much less prevalent in communities where immigrants um, participate and work, uh, specifically because of their uh, fear and concern of, of, of having a, uh, confronting the legal system or uh, – social services uh, that might uh, uh, result in uh, uh, incarceration. And there's just a general atmosphere, especially over the past year, where um, people uh, that are uh, migrant workers uh, feel more concern and and with some justifications. Jack Hanna is our guest. The Refugee Working Group of Indiana County will be hosting a panel discussion titled Migrant Workers Indiana County and Beyond. It's next Wednesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Indiana Fire Station West. It's free. It is open to the general public. I assume that uh, with the size of that place, they, they can handle whatever size crowd you get, so uh, no pre-registration requirement. Tell me about the format of the night. Panel discussion, question and answer, uh, that will also be a part of this? Uh, that is exactly correct, and uh, you know we're uh, um, uh, hoping uh, and... Uh, uh, have targeted uh, specific groups throughout Indiana County. We think this uh, particularly impacts uh, business owners, farmers, um, 
social service workers and, and uh, um, uh, political officials and uh, public uh, elected officials. Uh, we think that this is a, uh, a, a an economic and social issue that uh, has uh, a, a, an impact on our economy. And well, uh, we think and hope that it's a positive one and uh, uh, wish to uh, uh, raise that uh, idea and and have a, a a discourse and discussion about it with people that may even think differently. So we hope whatever people's perspectives are on this issue that they come and uh, uh, let's have a discourse. Well, wow, it's interesting the backgrounds of the panelists uh, that you described to us. Uh, that that should bring a lot to the conversation. There are a lot of different angles from which you can approach the entire issue. Yes, yes, uh, economically, legally, uh, politically, uh, social service-wise, as far as government uh, uh, um, um, services are concerned. So yeah, it's, it, it covers a lot of ground, and it's, a, it's an interesting topic. We hope that people uh, in the community find that to be the case also. Very good. Jack, thanks for coming in to visit with us. Todd, always a pleasure. Thank you. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented, as always, by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCS AM 1160, FM 101.5.